Hey dudes and chicks and new there's also don't apply to you. Welcome to Fake for Last Time. My name is Katie. Today I'm going to be filming my best of 2021. And so if you guys are still interested in hearing what I thought were the best products of 2021, then just hang out. <laughs> Okay, so I don't know if anybody even gives a fuck anymore about what I thought was the best of 2021, but like I'm a late, I'm, I'm always running late. It's only fucking February and I don't like to start on time anyways. Deadlines are fucking, those systems don't mean anything to me. Okay, so I'm gonna start with, there were two complexion products that I thought were like stand out above anything, not only last year, but many, but from many years before, and they were the Urban Decay Hydromaniac Tinted Glow Hydrator and the Milk Makeup Sunshine Skin Tint. BT dubs, the Milk Makeup Sunshine Skin Tint is 42 fucking dollars. It is an outrage. Who the fuck do they think they are? Let's proceed. They're both really, really good. They have a little bit better of coverage than the my ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic everything. I love everything in that whole line. The ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid everything. I love that whole fucking system. These two products both have a little bit better coverage than the Pretty Fresh. And the other thing that I don't like as much about either one of these is that one pump of the ColourPop is how much I need for my entire, that's like one pump. And so this, you kind of just squeeze however much you want, which is all right, except I always go a little bit overboard and you guys know how I hate to be cakey like or any creasing whatsoever. And so I have to be really careful with this because it does have a little bit fuller of coverage. And I feel like the, the on both of these, the consistency is a little bit more emollient. They're just a little bit thicker. Um, and this actually has SPF in it, so you can actually feel this is being thicker. And I definitely have to use a beauty blender to apply this one, whereas this one I can use my fingers or beauty blender. With my ColourPop, I can use my fingers and you can't even tell the difference. But with this, you definitely need a beauty blender to kind of spread everything, but also to kind of pick, absorb back a little bit of the product that you have on your skin with this. And this is actually a little bit, it can get a little bit too full coverage and it kind of works like this, where you like see those dots right there like you pump this and the dots come out and then you kind of roll it on well one pump is actually plenty for me and so if I go in two pumps I'm totally fucked like cakey cake face cakey mccakerson <laughs> I'm so dumb. I can't stand myself. The next things that I, I I am gonna give a mention to the melt cream blushes because I literally didn't get these until the end of January, but they really are that fucking good. And they're okay. I will say when I do my eyeshadow, the colors that I have do not really ever end up matching my eyeshadow looks. I have polished and golden hour. They were on sale on Beauty Bay for like half price. So I got each of these for like $13 or something. They look like this on the inside and I just use my beauty blender, my Juno & Co beauty sponge to apply them. I basically take the back, dab it in, dab, 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 dab. Then I smile, kind of go like this. It's like this. And I love the colors. They look great, but they're just really not. These like warm tone colors aren't really for me. They are just a little bit, I don't know. These corals just aren't, do not normally match what I'm wearing because I'm almost always wearing cool tones. So corals and like these warmer tones, I'm just now starting to learn how to wear them anyway. So um, I really love these and they're really good for a no makeup makeup. Um, they look so good when you aren't wearing any eyeshadow. If you just do your complexion and wear these, I fucking literally can't touch it. It looks so fucking beautiful. I actually got a really great compliment about how good my skin looked the other day when I was just wearing those. So basically like they're the shit. You will get compliments if you're wearing them. The Alien Cosmetics Low Light Palette looks like this. This is basically a highlighter wet dream for me. I literally love green highlighters and I feel like this really skated in right at the time when they stopped making, when they quit um, producing Laser Glazer by Kaleidos Makeup. And so, and honestly, the, all of these colors are so fucking pretty and super wearable too. They don't look like it, but they're really fucking wearable. And so like, anyways, th this is just such a great palette. I reach for this almost all the time to, for my highlighter. 
from my hell out, hell out. Lip products. I don't know if these are new from this year, but these Apocalyptic Beauty lip glosses are the dank shit. Like, literally fucking bomb as fuck. I don't know when they came out, but if you are looking for a pigmented, opaque lip gloss, this is your shit right here. Like, these were so surprising. Also, their color selection is so punk rock and fucking uh alternative and like all those whatever like if you're like if you like live on the outside of the boundaries when it comes to color and if you love wearing black lipstick or blue lipstick or green lipstick or any fucking color even this color was a little bit different and I just use it quickly as a gloss for my patreon the other night because I couldn't find my kush my milk makeup kush lip gloss and dude even this color is super unique the reflect in these glosses is so fucking beautiful and and the consistency is that which if you wear these a little bit too thick you will get like stringy little shit like poop mouth right there but if you just like pull your put your finger in pull it out and then like just lighten it up just a little tiny bit like these glosses the fucking texture of these is very comfortable and really like mm, it's just like silky and so good the alien cosmetics Satin Liquid Lips, the ones that are named after all the chicks. They are so good, so comfortable. Not completely transfer proof, but still, like, they're they're not gonna go anywhere. Like, if, you, if you're, like, eating a burrito, it will come off. But any fucking one will. Even Black Moon Cosmetics are, is, like, car paint, and it will come off if you're eating a fucking burrito. So, like, yeah, if you're eating, like, a burger or a sandwich or a burrito or something oily, these are gonna break down. But, dude, literally, these are so comfortable. The color selection is so fucking great. And the component, I mean... Bitch, please. These are so fucking cool. Like, she fucking outdid herself on these motherfuckers, man. But anyways, I really love all the colors, but Mandy is probably the one that has been the most outstanding for me. It's the one that when I wore it, it like blew my fucking mind. But I also love this color, Linda. It was my first color that I wore, and it looked so good with the look I was wearing. But honestly, Kaylina... All these colors are fucking the bomb, so there isn't any of them. I even wore the one that I thought was the ugliest. I'll tell you guys which one I think is the ugliest. How about that? It's the only one that I actually think is, like, not that pretty. It's, um, Jasmine, and I wore it yesterday, and it fucking looked great, so... I mean, it's like a, it's got a yellow tint to it when I have it on my own lips and it's a little bit more white based than I think looks good on me, but I wore it the other day, like no fucking problem. So, and then the other things that really were a fucking, a showstopper this last year was the fucking notoriously morbid liquid lipsticks. I have Never Trust the Living, Real Hot Girl Shift. Remember Nothing and Nexus Event. And literally, these are such a versatile product. They can go on your eyes. They can be used as a highlighter. They can go on your lips. They're super fucking comfortable. The shift is magical. It's alchemy. These kind of blew my mind and stole my heart, like, all at the same time this last year. Kind of like Rob Zombie, the first time I ever saw a performance. And then, finally, the Kaleidos Cloud Lab Lip Clays. I literally feel like when people call them lip clay, it doesn't do them any justice. They are literally like a cushiony cloud, a little slice of heaven on your fucking lips, having a seat. They're just having a seat, sitting comfortably, all fucking chushy and fucking fuzzy and warm and like so soft. They are literally like a fuzzy warm blanket on your fucking lips. I don't know. I don't know how else to explain it, but literally they're like a revolution in fucking lip product. Nothing. I, I, I'm literally like, they are revolutionary matte formula for lips and they are not lip clay. They are cloud lab. <laughs> like they are cloud lip clouds, not lip clays. One thing I forgot to say was that I don't really like the component that the cloud lab lip clays are in. It makes it really difficult to see what color is inside the component. And so I actually usually have to end up pulling up the 
lid and looking at the color every single time I use one just to make sure that I can see the color clearly. So that's one thing that I don't like about the Cloud Lab lip clays. I honestly haven't put on a single color of those that I don't love and I have like recently like been trying my hardest to wear all of them. I literally love every single color. I, I have every single color. I love every single color. They have a really good nude selection. They have a really good crazy like darker colors. They have a teal which I feel like a collection isn't really complete if you don't have a blue or a teal or a green you know, I, I just feel like that's kind of a necessity. If you're gonna be an inclusive brand, you have to have a teal. <laughs> now I'm gonna get to the ranking. I'm going to rank my top. I got it down to my top 10. I actually kicked out a couple palettes that I wanted to keep in here so that I could keep it, narrow it down to 10. So in at the number 10 spot is the Bad Witch Club. You guys know I had so much fucking problem with this. I don't know where I went wrong. Hopefully the ABH primer will kind of change the way that these performed, but the shimmers are fucking unhinged. And also the color story is like my heart. So, I mean, what the fuck, you know what I mean? I mean like what am I gonna do it had to go in the top 10 but it's just number 10 because the fucking purples performed so poorly it actually pissed me smooth the fuck off coming in at number nine is the path of the dark side palette it's by notoriously morbid the color story looks like this the shimmers are so unique and so shifty and so fucking magical just like their lippies literally they this is a shifty bitch and honestly this color season of the sith you can just see the fucking oh my god oh my god look at it it's pure fucking red when you turn it sideways and then now you see it now you don't now you see it now you don't now you see it? Now you don't. Okay. I love the color story and I fucking love this color right here. I honestly didn't think that these colors were going to be dark enough for to wear, actually wear and create a cohesive look with the rest of this palette. But this color actually is very dark on the eyes. Also, I feel like I just, I'm falling in love with this kind of like dirty gray, browny, grayy color lately. So it's been like basically my shit. And I do feel like this palette, there are looks that you can't create because there's no black in here, but all you got to do is bring in a fucking black and then you're totally set. So anyways, I feel like the, the shimmers in this palette are shocking. The theme is totally on brand and also like it speaks to my heart. So I fucking love this palette and I thought it was a really great, exciting, fucking well thought out release this year that actually got my blood pumping and it was actually the colors so colors were like eyegasmic okay so number eight is the club nebula palette the color story looks like this it's no fucking secret to everybody i have literally enjoyed every single moment that i have spent with this palette it is fucking beautiful the looks are so easy the shadows are so blendable and honestly they basically go together like peanut butter and ladies the looks that i have created with this palette have been beautiful the last one I created is really the one that sealed the deal. This palette honestly might not have made my ranking only because it's so spelled out that it actually like, it's kind of not that inspiring to me. And so inspiration is kind of a big factor for me when I rank a palette is whether or not it inspires me to create unique looks that are my own. And this palette kind of takes that away from me in a way because it's so spelled out. But the last time I used it, my look was so beautiful and it was so easy to get that it, it made my rankings because of that. Number seven is the Alien Cosmetics All I Ever Wanted palette. The color story looks like this. This was basically the year of all shimmer palettes. And although it was not... Don't get me wrong, All there's so many duochromes and so much variety in here and honestly, every, every fucking color that I've used from this palette has basically made me slide right off my fucking seat. They are beautiful. The only reason why it didn't rank a little bit higher is because it's an all shimmer palette and even though like it's a fucking... <laughs> It's like a hand job in a palette because it didn't have any mattes or, or otherwise it would have ranked much higher. I think that she killed it with that idea and I think that the quality of that 
palette is so good. I'm just so grateful that I didn't miss it because quite frankly, I almost fucking did. Number six is the Flower Punk palette by Kaleidos Makeup. The color story looks like this. It's fucking beautiful. I love it. The quality of the shadows is impeccable. I feel like this the theme is like my shit. I am a flower punk. I am actually a flower punk. I, I feel like that like, I mean, my friend was just saying the other day that it's so weird that like my actual birthday is going into Halloween and my clean date birthday is going into Valentine's Day because my lit literally I am like skulls and hearts. And so like if you could like pick like uh, two opposing forces, it would be flower punk. And so this fucking palette is amazing. The only reason why it didn't rank higher is for two reasons. There's no fucking dimension in this palette. There's no dark. The shades are not dark enough for me to get a dimensional look. And so if I want to go for that ethereal look, then that's totally fine. But the other thing is that this like this isn't actually my fucking shit even though clearly this is the punk rock this is the punk rock end right it's like my camouflage pants you fucking bet your ass i have an entire load of this color of clothes but i just don't wear it that much on my eyes and honestly that's probably gonna change here pretty quick you know there's gonna come a point where i'm gonna get bored of my own shit so anyways number five is the Freezy Flamey by Nomad Cosmetics. I feel like this is absolutely 100% the most unique color story that has come out of this year. And for that reason alone, and honestly, it's the Fire and Ice palette. And I'm not going to lie when I tell you, I put these colors together when I did that look. And it looked so much like fire that I was like, this is going in my top fucking in my favorites of the year. And it doesn't fucking matter. It does not fucking matter what happens this year. The Freezy Flamey palette is going in my top 10 and so but honestly I feel like Nomad killed it with the uniqueness and the color story and the quality of the shadows I, I just feel like and also these like cool tone blues are like I love this kind of color story and when this came out there really wasn't that you know this isn't like a, a common color story that comes out like I could basically count on one hand all the palettes I have in my collection that are kind of like this like uh, icy blue theme behind it and then i mean the names these fucking gnomes are adorable i mean who doesn't love fucking gnomes oh my god it's a gnome so anyways nomad crushed it this year and this one i i honestly this palette almost made number one it's just, uh, you guys will see why it didn't make number one the next is what number four is the serenity palette by annette <laughs> Kidding! It's the Serenity Palette by Menagerie Cosmetics and the collaboration with Annette from Annette's Makeup Corner. The color story looks like this. This palette probably inspired me more than any release this year. I took one look at this palette and I see a thousand fucking looks. It's beautiful, it's bright, it's inspirational, The and, and it's a unique color story that is actually really workable. The the colors work. You can go from this blue to these greens. You can go from this blue to this purple. You can go from this purple to the pink to the purple. You know what I mean? Like there is a lot of different ways that color theory wise they actually work. The shimmers are off the fucking hook. I literally could not pick a shimmer. They are blinding and beautiful and the whole palette is just like inspiration and a palette. Honestly, it should have been called inspiration. Also, the word serenity kind of speaks to me as a recovering addict so i feel like there was something there like subconsciously like calling to my heart that it was called serenity uh way to go annette you rock you're the shit if you called me in the middle of the night and you needed a ride i would fucking come get you so anyways i love you bitch um watch the queen conquer is the next palette honestly the packaging is a pain in my dick and everyone has said it but honestly i never fucking say that about p louise palettes the only reason why i'm saying it about this palette is because there is something about the way that this is set up that i cannot fucking see the looks that i want to get because i really want to mix these two sides together and i just can't see it when they're split up like that it actually pisses me off i kind of would like to go in and just fucking slice it down the middle but i just my virgo heart could never fucking do this but anyways this this has too many options for me to not rank it high like i can i fucking love big palettes little palettes little palettes just don't 
you know, they don't. I don't know why. Um, this would have been number one, except I'll, I'll explain why. This, this is honestly probably the number one palette of the year, but I didn't want to be so fucking predictable for one. And for two, these other palettes really, they're special. These ones are special. So number three, or number two, is the Nine Hydrant palette by Adept Cosmetics. The reason why this is ranking as number two is because I've literally used this so many times. This palette is so fucking easy to create a fucking look. You just do this in the crease. I literally, the other night, for my clean date, put this in the crease and didn't use anything else. I didn't put anything on my lid. I just gave myself some dimension in the crease and then blended it out to, to nothing. And it looked so fucking good. This color right here is so usable, so functional, and so beautiful. And it changes. You, you can you can use bronzer to do the same thing, but this is a cool tone And so it gives a different vibe, right? Like it's a it's a, it's makeup that nobody even knows is there But it totally changes the way that you look and then you just throw any one of these shimmers these fucking shimmers adept cosmetic shimmers are fucking they'll fucking twist you up they're fucking twisted. The fucking shift on these is unbelievable. So anyways, we had a lot of shifty shimmers come out this year and a lot of all shimmer palettes and Adept Cosmetics is like, they rank, man. Also, this palette's special to me because it's the last um, gift that Christine sent to me. She sent me the Plain Jane and this. And honestly, I was so spoiled. Like, I didn't even know how expensive these palettes were. So I'm just so grateful that I have these palettes. And honestly, this is like one of my favorite palettes of the year. And I've used this more than... In all of my palettes that I own, like the 150 or so, I've used this, this is in the top five of how many I've used it. Like, I have, like, five palettes that I use over and over and over again, and this has become one of them. So, and so, here's the cheat. I put the stack em up palettes, all three of them, as number one. So, that's fucked up. The only reason why I couldn't, I put them all as number one is because I can't choose a color. All of these palettes performed so good, and the looks, it was really about the looks that I came up with from these palettes. They were so fucking satisfying and so beautiful and the shimmers were amazing the color stories are amazing dude they're versatile as fuck for an eight pan palette you can do so many different things with these to tell you the truth dude it's been everything I could do to not use them over and over and over again and create three looks with each one of these so that you guys can see how versatile and how affordable these palettes are and the only thing that I don't like about these palettes is that they only have two shimmers a piece but that's what makes them so versatile. So you can't change the look with the shimmer, but I would rather change the look with the matte because I have a million shimmers. And like I just said, this was the year of shimmer. So I have many fucking shimmer palettes. And then this is the purple. Look at the way that there's a there's the cool tone purples and then there's the warm tone purples. And like you could mix and match those to make any fucking look you want. And then with this, it's like, Here's the blues, and this is like that cool toe, like almost blurple, blurple, per blue. Then there's the dark teal, the mint green, and then these greens, and then this fucking baby blue. Dude, this palette is very versatile. The things that you can do with this are so different from each other. And then this, there's the fluorescent pinks, and then the berry color, and then the deepening shade, and then there's this fucking like dusty rose that can really you can use these two colors to give you like a mauve and then this is like the blending shade right where you can just blend everything out and then this is like these two colors go together like what peanut butter and ladies like smoking a pancake that was my number one just because these three palettes are so fucking badass oh fuck i forgot to say i forgot to mention my alien cosmetics highlighter from the in the dark collection fucking love this thing i actually might get rid of my lime crime mermaids highlighter palette because of what alien cosmetics came out with this year to replace that shit that's my best of 2021 i hope you guys are satisfied with it don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell because you can't wait to see what happens next hit the like button if you like this video and you like hearing me fucking talk shit all fucking day long and if you like my sparkling personality and my boy's charm and hang out with me in the comments because i fucking love it if you got like halfway through this video and you thought oh my god this girl sure is pretty until she opens her big fucking mouth then go check me out on instagram i don't talk as much on instagram and if you guys were thinking well don't sugarcoat it katie why don't you tell us what you really think then go check out my patreon because i'm telling you everything i'm holding back on my channel thank you guys so much for watching you could have been anywhere but you were here wasting your time with me and i totally appreciate you later